Great, so thank you. It's a real pleasure for me to be invited here and be participating today. This is a, a topic I'm pretty passionate about, um, both professionally and personally, so I'm going to start by talking a little bit about that. Um, I grew up hiking and backpacking with my parents in BC's forests, and so I think it was a, a connection to the natural world at a young age, and really an interest in taking care of it that actually led me down the road into a, a career in the forest industry. Um, I've been involved in the industry for just over 10 years now in both the BC interior and down here on the coast. And I've worked um, in manufacturing and in the woodlands as well. And uh, I actually started there by following my dad into the industry. I started at the Adams Lake Sawmill, which is up near Kamloops. And uh, I was in high school at the time on the cleanup crew, but we glamorously called ourselves sawdust technicians. I continued on working in that mill. I actually went into production and, and quality control, and these were fantastic jobs. And uh, they helped me actually go to university where I studied natural resource sciences. And while I was at school, I transitioned from the sawmill up into the woodlands and became part of the team that supplied logs to this mill. And I spent six years there, and I worked in silviculture, and I worked in environmental certification. I did planning, stakeholder liaison, and building relationships with First Nations. And I began to realize that actually my favorite part of my job isn't being out in the woods, it's working with people. And, uh, you know, finding creative solutions and, and making other people's interests part of our plans. And, and that's what really drew me in. And so about this time last year, I really jumped on the opportunity to come down and join Interforce Coastal Woodlands and take a job solely focused on building relationships with First Nations communities. I saw it as my dream job, and I'm really happy to say that one year in, it is still my dream job. Um, I, I really strongly believe in the importance of recognizing and respecting Aboriginal rights and Aboriginal culture. And uh, I'd be lying if I said that my job didn't have challenges, but you know what, I'm working on something that's important to me, and I'm help building a future for an industry that I'm passionate about. And part of the reason why I'm passionate about forestry is that this industry helped build BC. A lot of our roads, airports, and even some communities may not exist today without our lumber pioneers. And to paraphrase Mark Twain, the uh, industry's sorry, reports of the industry's death have been greatly exaggerated. Um, the industry is still a key contributor in this province today. Last year, the forest products industry contributed $11.7 billion to BC's economy. It employed 58,000 people and provided $2.8 billion in wages and salaries. And if you look at indirect and direct employment, the total is around 170,000. A lot of these opportunities are in small remote communities, which means people can find a good job without having to leave home. But a lot of people in this room, and myself included, know that the economic numbers are just one part of the equation. True sustainable development includes, you know, both environmental and social indicators, as well as the economic ones. When I graduated from Thompson Rivers University in 2009, I came out expecting the industry to be sustainable and inclusive, and, and I haven't been disappointed. It's important for me to acknowledge that it hasn't always been this way, and there were many mistakes made in the past, um, but I do believe our industry has learned, and we are learning even today. I'd never pretend that we're perfect today, um, and I know we still have a lot of work to do, but what I can tell you is that you know, we've made a lot of progress and, uh, you know, we've, we're on the right path now. We've got some of the toughest environmental rules in the world and we've got accountable professionals and we've got third-party certification um, to help monitor us and uh, hold us accountable to our commitments. Um, the Great Bear Rainforest, which has been mentioned a few times already this evening, is, is a good example. You know, 14 years ago, industry and environmental groups had such divergent views it seemed they'd never see eye to eye. Um, but earlier this year, they jointly released a plan for ecosystem-based management. Um, you know, working collaboratively, they were able to come up with recommendations for the BC government and First Nations on how best to manage this unique area um, to ensure a healthy environment and economy without excluding social interests. So again, there's still plenty of work to do here. This is only one milestone step 
you know, there's a lot more work before this becomes real, before it's implemented, and as we continue to refine it over time. And this is one place. You know, there's other places that we need to continue this type of work and, and find these solutions. Um, but this industry is packed with people who are really proud to be responsible stewards of the land, and they really want to do the right thing. So one of the biggest changes that I've seen since I came into the industry has been the recognition and focus placed on working with First Nations. And again, I don't want to pretend we're 100% here, but I know we're working on it. This summer, I was deeply honored when the Heltzik uh, invited me to be a guest at the Gatwas Festival in Bella Bella. Interfor was a sponsor of Tribal Journeys, which involves First Nations paddlers from all over the Pacific Northwest. Um, we'd provided cedar lumber as a donation um, that was carved and painted by Heltzik artists and gifted out to visiting nations. But what was even more of an honor was actually behind the scene, and it was at the planning table that we shared with the Heltzik this year, where in the spirit and intent of that MOU, that Memorandum of Understanding that Laurie mentioned earlier, we worked as joint problem solvers. Um, we worked together to combine Heltzik interests and timber harvesting, and we were able to find a solution for a particular project and incorporate employment for Heltzik community members and provide a secure log flow to Interfor's mills. So it's a great template, and again, I know there's more work to do there, but I'm really excited to be going down that path um, and working with that nation. So as you can tell, I'm pretty pumped up about the forest industry today, um, and the future has good news too. If you add up employment growth, retirement, nutrition, uh, the total number of job openings in the next 8 to 10 years is projected to be close to 16,000. So that's out in the woods, that's in the mills, that's in offices, a huge range of opportunities. We've really moved from extraction to leading edge forest management and we're leaders in forest certification and advanced wood technology. So the Wood Innovation and Design Centre just opened up at UNBC in Prince George and this is uh, the world's tallest all wood structure. Uh, it reflects the fact that architects, engineers, and builders all see wood as a great way to improve their environmental performance and also reduce their costs. Earlier this month, Interfor announced plans to invest $50 million in upgrading our sawmill in Castlegar. This is going to improve quality, efficiency, productivity, and keep this mill competitive and providing jobs in that community into the future. And we're not the only one in the industry who are reinvesting in BC right now. These are the signs that tell us the forest industry will continue to be a strong industry in our province, and that's good news for all of us. A strong contributing forest industry is just one more reason to get excited about why forests matter. Thank you. Thank you.